Is it your turn to bring cupcakes to the classroom for your child's party? Or are you snack mom this week and you're getting ready to bake a batch of chocolate chips? It is time to start thinking about something other than cookies or cupcakes for our kids in schools. It doesn't have to mean the end of celebrations, but it does mean that every party is an opportunity to offer some healthy options. With us today to show us how to do that and go about creating some healthier classroom parties is Betsy Teco, a freelance health and nutrition writer and fitness writer who also travels to local schools to talk to students about the importance of eating well and physical activity. So Betsy, welcome and, and thank you very much. Thank you. I, I think the first thing we want to talk about is why it's so important to offer some healthy options because I think a lot of people hear us say this and they think, oh boy, they're taking all the fun out of it, they're becoming the food police, and, and that's really not it. No, that's true. What we're saying is moderation is important. And when I say we, I mean parents, teachers, school nurses, anyone who cares about kids' health realizes that moderation in everything is what's important. Right. What, what about people who would say, well, we do have moderation, though, because we're not having a party in the classroom every single day. Well, think about there's 20 kids in a classroom, sometimes more. If every child celebrates a birthday, that's a lot of parties. You have right. teachers having celebrations for holidays and different events. Plus, we really don't know what kids are eating at home. In general, kids don't eat enough fruits, vegetables, whole grains. And then we have teachers saying they see kids bringing a lot of treats from home. So yes. if we add cupcakes on top of that at a classroom party, we're not really serving kids as well as we should. That's a really good point. I've, I've heard teachers say that as well. And I think it's also important to note that constant exposure to low nutrient food is just not doing our kids any favors. That's true, and that's why today a lot of schools are instituting policies that promote healthy eating. We know that healthy kids make better learners, and from, from what we can see, what schools are doing, the, the goal is not to take away all the cupcakes and the cookies. The goal is to offer some healthy options and offer some structure and some guidelines. That's true. And it does vary school district to school district. But in general, what we're saying is let's make sure healthy things are even available in the school, more than we've done so in the past. Right, right. Schools have traditionally not been the healthiest zones. Not really, but we're yeah. changing that. Great. Uh, let's talk about some general ideas. How do we go about making some changes? Okay, my recommendation and what people are saying is get the focus off of food, put it on fun. Make sure there is activities that you can do in the classroom that get kids socializing, up and talking, rather than sitting at a desk with a pile of food to devour, which is in the past what we've done. So think about decorations, music, um, activities that can become the focus. Those sound like things that in the end kids would probably enjoy more than food itself. Mm -hmm. And I would think that they're probably things that they're going to remember more than sitting down and, and eating an, yet another cupcake exactly. if you can get them involved with each other and interacting. Um, I think that's also important because it teaches kids that food is not a reward. Mm -hmm. And that's something that can lead to eating disorders, can lead to obesity in adults. You know, how many of us have said, oh, I had a really hard day. I deserve that ice cream sundae. That's right. And so think creatively, whether you're a parent or a teacher, what can we do in the classroom? Maybe it's a craft. Maybe it's an activity. Um, it could be dance, music. The parent could be a guest reader, donate the book on their child's birthday. That is an excellent idea. Right. And also, um, how about if kids, instead of getting a candy bag on their birthday, get a badge or a crown to wear? Really, really neat. I those are such good ideas for a parent who's maybe a little bit timid mm -hmm. and you know every other mom is bringing in cupcakes how, how would you suggest that they go about being the one to venture out onto that healthy limb yeah that is a big step if it hasn't been done in the past but a teacher should be aware of the school policy which is in place with all schools today so a teacher should be open to a parent coming to them and say look I've got some ideas creative ways to be more active less food oriented can I do that and also try to get other parents maybe friends to support you 
and I think it should happen. Right. There is always strength in numbers, and if a couple parents go together and say, these are the types of celebrations we want to see, there's probably a much better chance that, that they'll get yeah. something like that instituted. Um, these are all great ideas, but almost every celebration in the end does involve some kind of food. That's true. So how do we make the switch to offering some healthier things without feeling like the kids are being cheated? That's right. My first uh, alternative would be fruit, because fruit is sweet, nutritious. Kids typically like fruit, and you can make it fun by cutting them in different shapes or by stacking them on sticks like a fruit kebab. Um, they also like dipping fruit in a low-fat yogurt dip. Cut dip, up pieces of fruit. Right, cut up pieces, maybe have a toothpick, dip it in. You can also use dip for vegetables, cut up vegetables. Beyond that, you have uh, low f or, uh, whole wheat crackers, popcorn. Um, you can have trail mix. Just be careful with peanut allergies. Right, you have to check right. on that. I also have a seven-year-old who's a little picky with eating. She likes fruit smoothies, and I recommend this as an alternative to ice cream socials. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, because what you're doing is, with my daughter, we put strawberries, banana, little ice cubes, yogurt, and milk, mix it in a blender. She drinks it up, and it's fun at a party because blenders are a oh, new yeah. thing. Yeah. Right. And then lastly, I would say, how about with the cupcakes, which we all love, but you can make them healthier by including whole wheat flour instead of white flour. Right. By making them lower in fat with angel food cake mix, by Excellent. making them smaller, or substituting low-fat muffins. Great, great. How about drinks? Drinks, I would say water would be your top yep. choice. Everyone drinks water. Right. Secondly, 100% fruit juice. Okay. Look at the label. Make sure it's 100% right. fruit juice, so not the drinks. Stay away from the soda. Yeah. Definitely yeah. not the soda. High in sugar, high in caffeine. Excellent. The message to kids in the end, moderation is the key. Yes, moderation. Definitely. That means you can have some favorite snacks but make sure you have the healthy alternatives. And, and food does not have to be the focus of every single celebration. I'm guessing in the end that actually the adults are probably going to miss it more than the kids. They probably don't mind. It really is all about what we teach them and, and the kinds of messages that we're sending our kids. So, Betsy, thank you so much for joining us today. And be sure to check in on our website. It's www.pottstownfoundation.org. And tune in again to Mission Good Nutrition. To turn those classroom celebrations into healthy ones, think beyond the cupcake. Kids love cut up fruits and vegetables, especially if there's dip around. They also like fruit smoothies, a good alternative to ice cream socials. There's whole grain muffins and pretzels. And remember, it's not all about the food. Volunteer to be a guest reader or bring small toys instead of sugary treats.